through saving. I tell you, it doesn't affect him. He comes through and does his work. They're, they can do all they want, but it don't slow down the work. Amen. He moves through, yeah. saves, he's yeah. done his work. He did it when his son walked on the earth. They, they raised hell on him, but he done it. He went through and did all he wanted to do. Yeah. Made a way for the Gentiles. And I want to thank you for being so good to us. Amen. So merciful. I, I, I hate it for my country, but I've got another land that I'm going to. I hate it for down here, I do. If you turn from God, it's an awful thing. I just write that we've got a place to go to that He's prepared for us. He made a way for old Gentiles. I just I still can't get over that. But he's had mercy on us. He is I really I really appreciate him coming by. And I think these little Kids, that even if you're older, you don't know him. 
I think about this song. I used to think, when you're going to come by, Lord. Amen. And that's why if you're here and he's, if he's, you feel just the smallest amount of him Amen. tugging at you, I've moved forward. Amen. I've moved forward to him. He's the only way. 373. Ask me not. Amen. Ask me not. that song I, I had that on my mind on my heart down in the prayer room a little while ago and I know that generally we sing that as a invitation song and someone that maybe doesn't know Christ and and calling out for mercy and but I was down there and I got to thinking Lord I mean I'm looking forward to the meeting this week and I'm looking forward but 
and, and I think it'll probably be some of the best preaching and singing and all that. But I said, Lord, <laughs> we need you. I mean, I want to hear all that, but I want to hear from him. I want to hear his voice. I want to feel his breath. I want to feel his touch. I mean, I thought about that. I, I mean, I want to hear that still, small voice. Yeah, I want to feel, I want to feel, you remember feeling the tug. <laughs> I mean, that's what I want. I want to feel that tug from heaven. I want to feel him. That holy touch. Ah, Lord God, that's what, I mean, all this other, it's good. And we, it's needful. But he's still, he's still the best. I mean, just his presence. Just to feel him just. Manifest his presence. Lord, that's the best thing. That's the most, that's a needful thing. Lord, we need him. I, I got to thinking about over there in Acts chapter 2. It talked about there's a mighty rush. That'd be good to feel the breeze from heaven again, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, just having come by and just, Lord God, you say, I'm in a dark place. That's all right. He. He dwells in the thick darkness. There's no valley too dark, too long, too deep that he can't uh, he can't uh, span that valley and 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 be in there in the midst of it. And we may not know our way in nor out, but he does. Thank God. I mean, he's all he's really all we need. He's it. He's everything. Lord God, he's all we need. We sing that all the time. He's all we need. He really is. He's all we need. He, he's, he, nothing else. You can't add, you can't take anything and add to him and make it any better than he already is. He is what makes heaven, heaven. He's what makes uh, dwelling here on the earth. I mean, Whatever Jimmy is talking about, our country and things, and oh, I've give up on that. <laughs> I've thrown my hands up and said it's yours. Do with it whatever you want. I've done read in the book. The Bible said it wax worse and worse. Uh, it matters not who gets in. I mean, I read in. I, I read in the scriptures where men shall depart from the faith. That's what makes it wax worse and worse. Is people do, do not want him to pass by anymore. There's not too many sinners calling out for God. Not I mean, there is no fear of death. There is no fear of hell. There is no fear of eternity much anymore. I mean, people live in a, in a false bubble thinking they're never going to stand before God or anything else. I mean, but it is going to happen. There is still a scripture that says it's once appointed unto man to die, and after this, the judgment. And so anyway, things are going to come to pass, and I'm glad that they are. I mean, I hate to be, I, I, thought, I thought I'd like to have been living back yonder when this, but it's always been this way. It's always been corrupt. Uh, when they got kicked out of the garden, it was corrupt. And it's been corrupt ever since. God cleansed the thing one time uh, during the flood. And I preached this the other night. Uh, as soon as he cleansed it, it didn't make it a generation. Noah's grandchildren, they was done building their way back to God. Nimrod and, and the other crowd went down to, went down to Egypt, Mizraim. I mean, they headed off that way. Had their, uh, It didn't last. God cleansed it. It didn't last, but I'll say this, if Jesus cleansed you, it'll last. Yeah. Amen. You've got something they do not have. You've got, uh, you've got the blood of the lamb. You've got life, and I mean, you've got hope, and uh, you say, I ain't got no hope down here. You've got Jesus, you've got hope. Yeah, thank God, you're, you're the only one that does have hope. I mean, you're the only one, the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You're the only one that's got to say so. They think they're in charge. They're not in charge. 
You got more power sitting in here, just a little crowd, than all of those that gathered up in Congress this week and voted and give away and done everything. There's more power in here this morning. All you got to do is call on heaven. Thank God. You can move heaven. They can't move nothing. They can't get a vote through. All you got to do is talk to him. Hallelujah. It'll be all right. If you're saved, it is all right. Amen. I'm glad to be in God's house this morning. You know, I, I feel good in, in the Lord. My, my greatest desire is not that uh, all these other things would come to pass. My greatest desire is that God would come in here and, and talk to these young'uns and talk to those that's hurting. I mean, that's where my heart lies. It's not in, in that. I about quit just listening to it. I mean, because it ain't going to change. But I'm trying to get focused back on what I, the, I mean, I thought about this. They tried to get Jesus to do different things. And you know what he told them? Listen to me. He said, I'm about my father's business. <laughs> you want me to come down here and be king over this and run the Romans out and do all this? I'm about my father's business. That's why I'm here. And I've learned a little bit out of that. I mean, thank God that's why he, he saved you, put us here. We ought to be about the Father's business. Let them have it. We'll burn up one day anyway. Uh, and don't worry about it so much. He'll come back one day and rule with a rod of iron. He'll take care of them. But ain't the Lord good? Well, I didn't mean to get started with all that. I'm sitting there and get out of the way, let somebody teach do whatever. But I want you to mind the Lord this morning. I, I thank God I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad to be in God's house. I mean, if you ain't real careful, all this mess will just depress you. But I'm glad we can come into a place and hear some good news. Good news from a far country. As cold water is to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. That's what I want. I want some news from heaven this morning. Yeah, I want to hear about that gentle Savior. I want to, I want to hear about somebody that loves me and cares for me. Thank God. I want to hear he lives. Amen. Yeah, man. He lives, thank God. Amen. Yeah, I, I, all I, if you turn on the news, all you hear is about death. I mean, they're, Russia's mad because they bombed them. <laughs> Ukraine's mad because Russia bombed them. Israel's mad. Hamas is mad. The government's mad. But thank God we can be happy in here this morning because he lives. Yeah, thank God he's alive. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The borders are open. <laughs> but I got to thinking about that. There's another border that if you'll come in by the blood of the Lamb, he'll let you in there. Thank God. But you have to come in that one the right way. You have to come in that one. There's only one way into that one. And... Bible said, hey, listen to this. They're, they're rushing to the borders down there, but I read in the scriptures where he standeth at the door and knock. He's knocking on you, trying to let you in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Ain't the Lord good? Yeah. Boy, he does things different than we do. Amen. <laughs> he does things just totally opposite. Amen. But I'll say this, he does them right. right. I mean, what he does is right. It's Amen. good and very good. Well, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm going to do. Anybody got anything on your heart this morning? You mind the Lord? Well. Amen. 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 What a Savior we yeah. have. Amen. What Amen. a gracious, kind God. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Not because of who we are, because of who He is. Not on what we can do, but yeah. what He done done. Amen. We're in. We're in. We've been grafted in. We get all the, the the goodness from the root. We get all the blessings that Israel's got and didn't do a thing for it. Yeah. Amen. Didn't, Amen. Earn, didn't earn one thing, and you can fight against him after you're in, and it won't change your standing one bit. Amen. It doesn't change God, who he is, and what he does in his word. He's, he's faithful and true. Amen. Thank yeah. God. Amen. We can't help messing stuff up. We're just corrupt and we can't Amen. help it. and he knows that 
Yeah. So he made it so we couldn't tear it up. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, man. When I close my eyes, I'm going to see him and be welcomed in as a good and faithful servant. Yeah. Because that's who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Yeah. A good and faithful servant. Yeah. He come done what the Father wanted, <laughs> cleansed us. You can't get no better than we are. Amen. You can't get no more Amen. saved. You can't get no more clean. We're as holy as his son. Yeah. We're holy enough to go in before God. If you can just think about how holy that is. Yeah. I read Amen. where the angels still have to cover their faces and bodies when they go before God. They have to cover up. We don't. We're as his son. Yeah. It's hard to believe that, but it's true. Yeah. Amen. Come before his throne boldly. <laughs> Yeah. Amen. It's hard to believe it, Lord. Yeah. I'm glad it's so. Yeah. I'm glad Amen. I'm saved. Yeah, man. I'm Amen. glad he came to me and I turned to him and he he drew me. I run. I did run a little bit, but not long. I wanted to be saved, but I was scared. Amen. I was scared, but don't know why, but it's just naturally the body, old flesh will run from God because it's it knows it, it knows who he is. I never met him, but when he spoke to me, I knew who was talking to me. Yeah. I didn't have no doubt who, who, who called me out. I didn't have no doubt. I knew who he was. Amen. He didn't make a mystery of that. Yeah. And he didn't he didn't just drop me. When I run, he followed me. Amen. Followed me all down to the little house we was raised in. <laughs> yeah. Let me come back. Amen. I said, Amen. You know, he could have saved me down there, but I had to be saved here because I was a, I was scared to run. And, and I said, if you just let me back in that church, God, I won't turn you away. And I lied to him because as soon as he came back to me in my seat, I started backing out of the deal. He doesn't let me in. He doesn't come back. But he spoke to my heart again because I, was, I, was, I thought everybody was going to laugh at me. I thought they'll laugh at me when I get up and they know I'm lost. They'll laugh at me. And he didn't say he wouldn't laugh. He said, Jim, there won't be nobody laughing when they cast you in the lake of fire. Yeah. And I said, I ain't going to help for nobody. They can laugh if they want to, devil. And that's what I told the devil. I said, they can laugh if they want to. Amen. And I stood up. And that, re- that peace was right here. I didn't afford to get out of my seat. He is already here. Yeah. He's Amen. so close. He's so close to you right now, you just don't see. Yeah. It's hard Amen. to see him with these eyes, but he's so close. Amen. Yeah, and he's right here now. He's not he's not far. He's, Amen. He's so close I can't even you can't lose him. Yeah. He's so close. Amen. And he don't leave. I don't care what else happens, Amen. he don't leave you. Yeah. If you're here lost and you're looking for somebody that won't leave you, they'll stick close to you and watch over you. Yeah. Amen. I recommend him. He's the Amen. best friend. Ever, ever had. Yeah. Ever had. He won't leave you. He'll cleanse you and make you ready for heaven. Whether you look like you are or not, it don't make a difference. Amen. It only matters what God thinks. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the only thing he's looking at is his son. Thank Amen. God for Jesus. Praise yeah. his holy name, Mike. Amen. Praise Amen. his holy name. Amen. That's yeah. what they're doing in heaven. Amen. Yeah. In heaven, they're not talking about nothing to him. They're looking at him, casting their crowns at his feet. And give him glory. Amen. Yeah, what a savior we have. Yeah. He's worthy of everything you can say and more. Amen. Yeah, I wish I did have eloquent words that could tell what he does. But he's so good. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Brother Mike, can our family sing a song? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on up. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Don't you mind the Lord this morning. I appreciate that. Yeah. He said. Worthy is the Lamb. I read that again yesterday. I've, I've been thinking about that a lot. Revelations chapter 4 talks about, mentions it several times, talks about the throne of God. He that sat upon the throne, the one that sat upon the throne had a book. No man was found worthy to open that book in chapter 5. No man in heaven. Angels wasn't worthy. John was weeping because there's no man found. <laughs> then somebody got his attention and said, look at the lamb. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> he looked at the lamb and said, worthy is the lamb. Yeah. Amen. He is able to take the book and open it up. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to God. Looked all over earth. Looked all over heaven. Underneath the earth and there's none found. 
But when he saw the lamb, it was all different. What I wanted to say is this, if you ever see the lamb, it'll all be different. Amen. I mean, your whole life will be different. Just look at the lamb. Y'all come on when you're ready. Amen. You pray for him. Amen. church this morning.
window, a table spread in splendor, someone standing by the open door. I can't see a crystal river, I must be near forever, see I've never thinking as they're singing that uh, that song get as well with my soul most of y'all know Horatio Spafford wrote that and went through all kinds of things and it didn't come without any trials but I didn't know this the other till the other day but the man that that wrote the music to that song and then a lot of the other songs in this red hymnal uh, uh, he uh, he went through a lot of things too, but they said that when, and I can't remember his name right now, maybe somebody else knows, but, but uh, they said that his wife, him and his wife got in a, a terrible fire, and I can't remember exactly the whole story, but anyway, he escaped and went back and tried to get her out and could not, he, but he was free. But when they found him, he laid there with her and held her and burned up in the fire too, would not leave her. And uh, wouldn't leave her. I thought, ain't that something? But I thought it's still well with his soul. Thank God. I mean, the Lord, <laughs> that's love, ain't it? And I guess what I was thinking about is I, I appreciate the Lord. I hear Willie praying every now and then. He'll talk about the Lord getting in the fire for us. I'm glad he didn't leave us. Thank God them Hebrew boys is down there and is in the fire. But that king looked down there and said, we've cast three men in, but I see four. <laughs> I see another one. Like unto the Son of God. And uh, Lord God, you might feel like you're in the fire and and. You, but that's all right. He's in there with you. And you're going to come out without the smell of smoke on you. And nothing binding you. And nothing holding you. Thank God. And those that cast you in, those are the ones that got burned up. But the Lord's good, isn't he? Amen. 
Anybody else got anything on your heart? I mean, I want you to mind the Lord. I don't know what to do. to reality. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? You might as well, it's too late to go to Sunday school. You might as well just listen to the Lord. And I don't know what to do. But he does. Amen. It ain't time, that's what's keeping you here. The Lord, he knows. <laughs> He's got his ways. They're far above our ways. His thoughts far above our thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Mind the Lord. We I know, there's a song that the inspiration sang in, in the chorus. It says, For the first time I'll see Jesus, even though we've already met. Yeah. Amen. I thank the Lord that, you know, I'm going to, it's the face going to end in sight. Amen. We're going to get to see what we believed and what we've trusted in all these years. Amen. And I'm glad that we don't have to wait. Till we get there, right. by faith, we can have that fellowship with you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> Shoo. I can only encourage the church to look back. Remember where you were when you come to it. Yeah. It's good to remember the things that God's done. Amen. I'd encourage the church, everyone, just to look back and think where you was when you come to where you was. Amen. He's, he's so hurt. But think on the good things. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. To be rescued. Remember where you were when he came to where you was at? Mount you up. Yeah. That's what we're going to be talking about in eternity. Amen. All that he's done. And we're going to see more than what we know. There's more than we don't even know Amen. about. Yeah. How much Amen. he's done. <laughs> How much he's done. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Can they sing that song? Do you remember when? You don't know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, Father, could you do a match? Uh, Wayne had to leave. He got sick. And they had to take him home. So y'all pray for him. Okay. I don't know exactly what's going on. But. Right. Yeah, Amen. Lord, she's kind of way. 
Lord, she's having a hard time. And remember Jimmy Doss that's related to Danielle, and then he's, he's been really sick. And had a perforated ulcer on top of his esophageal cancer, and I think in like 36 hours he had eight units of blood. Pray for him and, his, and that family. You know, I want to thank the Lord for the blessings. You know, life is hard. Yeah. Amen. And I have had the hardest time since Tyler. The Lord's helping me, but it's took a while. And I want to remind everybody that don't let the devil back you up thinking you're the only one that's having all the time. Because he will. He will make you think that everybody else's life is good and why is yours so bad. Everybody has the hardest. Yeah. Don't forget where to go for your help. You're not going to find it anywhere else. Even when you're still about halfway, I still know where my help comes from. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's all right. You can be half mad or all the way mad. The Lord can take it. <laughs> He's a friend that sticketh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He stays. Yeah. He don't run off when it gets hard. You can't. The Lord wants you got him. You can't get rid of him. No way. He don't want to run off. No. He's better than that. He's better than that. We get our feelings hurt. <laughs> we get upset. He's not mad at you. He's not upset at you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Good to be saved this morning. Lord God. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. Enjoy the Lord, I reckon. Throwing their, their palms and their coats yeah. and everything in the room. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, man. He's coming into town. Yeah. And uh, he said, you know, they said, tell them to quit. Tell them to quit. And he said, if they quit, tell them to try. Yeah. yeah. We need to worship this morning. Yeah. 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 Best thing, yeah. Hey, man, I'm going to get Terry and Kim to come on up here and get the choir and just keep at it. <laughs> Have at it. If you need something, the Bible said seek him while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Yeah. Hey, put a gold spark in. Don't give his testimony. Who? Dog. Yeah. I don't get to see him much. Yeah. I love to hear how God saved him. Yeah. Amen. I love to tell how God got to where he was. Yeah. 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 He would. I appreciate it because it helps my heart. We don't yeah. see him much. Let me say this first, Jimmy. <clears throat> they may raise all the hell they want against the church of God, against us Christian brothers and sisters. But I read in this book where there's a king against Amen. him. No rising up. No rising up. And no not rise against him. We will not be defeated. We'll be taken out of here. <clears throat> so my wife and I got married in 1966. She was saved and I wasn't. I just got out of the Marine Corps. Uh, we, were date we dated in high school and such. And we got married and um, I didn't know God. I didn't grow up knowing God. Uh, didn't know about Salvation, saving grace, the blood of the Lamb, didn't know none of that stuff. Didn't much care, because I didn't know. <clears throat> and uh, my wife was a Christian lady, and <clears throat> we were in love. And first four years, it was kind of tough. And one day, her and a friend of a couple of of ours that we went to high school with. They were saved too, and they just went on a campaign of getting me saved, and they just wouldn't leave me alone. And they, I'm, I mean, they wouldn't leave me alone, and I'd get angry and, and, and things like that. So I got this idea one day that a revival came to town, and I got this idea, all right, I got with those three, and I said, I'll make you a deal. I'll go to this revival you want me to go to, but after that, you have to leave me alone. And so I went the first night. Amen. Set way back there. God can find you way back there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I didn't get saved that night, but... You sure shut my mouth. <laughs> we went home, but I, next morning I got up and going to work, and I said to her, don't make supper. We'll eat, we'll catch supper on the way. And she said, way where? And I said, going back to that revival. I went 
Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. Way in the back, next to the last pew, because the back pew was full. <clears throat> and I was in there. And the preaching and the singing, testimonies, the altar call. I knew right there and then, Jimmy, if I didn't get saved that night, Amen. I was toast. But I really didn't know how. I just knew that through that meeting that there was a, a God that loved me, Amen. a sinner. Amen. And he sent his son to die for me on Calvary's cross. I knew that much. I took that much in. And I sat, sat there when the invitation was given. I stood. I grabbed the hold of the pew in front of me. I knew in my heart I had to go, but I didn't want to go. I had a long way from the back to the front, you know. And there's such thing as pride. <laughs> he just cut that pride all to pieces. And I held onto that pew really, really hard, and I started, my legs started doing this. And I knew I either had to let go of that pew or fall on my face. <laughs> so I let go. Boom, down here on this side of the altar. Preacher came down, read scripture. People were, I didn't even know those people, and they were shouting. Amen. Praying in the Lord, I got saved right there. Amen. God called us to preach the following year. That was a mystery. I didn't know nothing. But he called us to preach, and then I got saved. That was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Of course, my wife fit in there with our marriage and stuff. But then we came here. <laughs> About 75, 1970. <laughs> what can I say except glory? Amen. And it's always good to be here. Amen. Always. God gave us a good trip down here. And we just appreciate it. And I sat there and I, you kept saying, Lord kept speaking to me, and I kept, he kept saying, not now, not now, not now. <clears throat> but I did want to testify. I did want to give him the praise and thank him for saving a hell-bound sinner. Amen. And I came to see a lot of folks today. And we left the house. It was four inches of snow and snowing. And it took us about three hours to get to the interstate, which only usually takes an hour. 15 inches of snow they got. <laughs> we came here to get warm. It had frost this morning. <laughs> but we did come here to get warm by the heat. We came here to get warm by, Amen. by those guys. Yeah. Amen. I don't know what else to say. I'll just get out of the way, but I just want to Thank the Lord for bringing us here, and let me just share this. We came through, we went to see my, our oldest son who lives in Suffolk, uh, Virginia. We came down through the tunnel. I don't know if you guys have been through the tunnel or not. And uh, we stayed with a friend, stayed with my son. Uh, and then we came through Statesville, and I didn't know why we come through Statesville, other than we knew some people that moved from New Hampshire down there just last two weeks or so and we thought well we'll go through that one and maybe pick them see them but they weren't there but we saw a friend of ours gave us the address of two four people that we knew there uh, and they came to our church in pennsylvania every november to celebrate my birthday they were singers called from the heart i don't know if you've ever heard of them and the lead singer from the heart had been laid out, he stayed, he, I don't know, something happened to him, he just quit going to church and stuff. And we'd been praying for him for several years, and the Lord led us through Statesville, and we met up at Cracker Barrel, uh, his wife and the other, other couple, and he didn't come. And uh, then he called and said he was gonna come. And anyhow, yeah, long story short, 
I think he got yeah, he got connected back. Right. Amen. So he's supposed to be in church. Amen. And there's no better place to be than in God's house where God, where God is. Hey, I love you folks. I, I don't think I know all of you, but I love Danny, uh, Brett, and Kim. And I love all, all, all you folks. He's been so good to me. God's been so good to me. And the older folks here that knew us when we first came know I was a rascal. Right? Y'all know that. But, you know, I, I got better. <laughs> he said, help for all those who find. I found help. Amen. 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 That's good, ain't it? Said he come down here to get warmed up. I said, I hope the Lord burns you up. I didn't mean it in that way. I, I want him to really warm him with whatever he needs. <laughs> yeah. I'd leave that snow, too. But anyway, Lord, I hope the Lord just warms us all up. Amen. 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 Really just helps us. Well, y'all come on up to the choir. Yeah, come on. Everybody wants to help. Just come, come on. Come and help us. Everybody Amen. Just go ahead, go ahead and enjoy yourself this morning. Let the Lord help you. Good place to be. Thank God.
I end yesterday, I'm going to change the words to that song. <laughs> it's not almost completed, it is completed. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I told him I'll go on. I ain't going to stay here long, but I thought we, we say that, and I hear them talk about how that the Lord's up there preparing us a mansion, and I thought, you know, the Lord created the heavens and the earth in six days. I've been saved since I was almost eight, and Lord God, he's still working on mine. That must be something, ain't it, that it took him 40-some years to continue working on something. <laughs> that ain't what he went to build. He went to prepare a place for us. He took his own blood, blood and put it on the mercy seat. Yeah, Thank God. He put that on there. The Bible said in my father's house are many mansions. Amen. He already got them fixed up. But anyway, that's just a little pet peeve of mine. I'll let you by with that this morning. And uh, I'm glad to be in God's house. Amen. Hope he'll bless you this morning. It's been good to be here already. Amen. Thank God. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm glad it's camp meeting week. I'm looking forward to uh, just uh, getting in here and enjoying the Lord. I hope you are. Amen. I hope you'll come and be with us and, and uh, uh, get in here and just get some things from heaven. Amen. I mean, it'll help you. Uh, you know the, you, uh, I shouldn't have to say this, but most of you know the, what goes on during the week. Uh, they'll feed you over here three times a day. You come breakfast, noon, and supper. And they'll feed you, and we'll have services at 10 and 7. And, and uh, if you go hungry spiritually or physically, it'll be your fault. But anyway, if you need anything, uh, there's a few already here, but if, if you need anything, let us know. You'll have to let us know. I'm not good at reading minds, so you'll have to let me know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad, Lord God, I've been kind of, I know it's it, it the job. I appreciate everybody that's been working and doing things and getting everything ready and all that. But pray the Lord just give strength. And, and uh, most of all, like I said, just meet with us as, as the week goes through. And he's really all we need. And uh, a lot of folks coming in, Lord willing, if, if uh, everybody that comes says they are, we'll have a, a good crowd. Most of all, I want heaven to show up. Amen. 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 But I'm going to read the prayer list to you real quick this morning. I'll try not to take up too much time. <coughs> but if you would pray for Brenda Stanley, Norma Blevins, Danny Minton, <coughs> Danny Tester, Robin Boardwine, Bobby and Jean and Charlotte. Continue to pray for Robert Schrader and Bill Donahue and Billy Craddock, Matthew Canner, Tony Rich, Wayne and Renee Mullins, uh, Johnny and Pat Burton, James Cable, uh, Debbie. Um, who is that, Rosemma? Okay. Well, that's normally the way it is, but Jane ain't on there. so <laughs> I, I've got her list memorized, and if it gets out of whack, it messes me up, but... <laughs> but if you would pray for uh, Robbie and Kara Gabbard, Brother David Gabbard, Chris Elders, uh, Mr. Green, if you would pray for him and all the family, uh, Phyllis Carver and Olima Rice, Ruth Thornburg, Gil Riplinger, there's Jane and Debbie Parker. That, that's, uh, oh, that's Robbie. That ain't Debbie. I'm sorry. It's her writing. That's not my reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just aggravating her. I appreciate Rosemma. Thank God. Amen. Best deacon I got. But <laughs> that's what I tell her. Messes them up. You say that to a preacher, they think you got a woman deacon. <laughs> what I'm saying, I just aggravate her. Lord, she visits and sends more cards than anybody I know of. Amen. I appreciate it. But anyway, Hattie Crane, Judy Campbell, Linda Berry, Barbie McMurray, Becky Garrison, Rita Smith. Uh, Karen Pageant uh, is having surgery on Monday. Brother Nathan and all the missionaries. Uh, camp meeting tomorrow, you remember that? And uh, if you would, continue to pray for Rosemma and uh, Carolyn's brother Howard and uh, their sister also. And they, uh, but anyway, and then if you would, remember the lost. Pray that God just visits and meets and calls and, and then answers. But anyway, we're going to get the ushers to come real quickly and take up the offering. You give the Lord's, he's blessed you. And uh, we'll try to move on quicker. Brett, you pray for us uh, if you will. Me and Kim went this week and seen uh, Miss Rice on Wednesday, uh, Thursday. And she was uh, 
Matthew doing pretty good. And uh, uh, sometime maybe a little bit later on, a week or two, or three or whenever, I went to her house and uh, she wasn't in the house, wasn't around. I went way down in the back field and she's down there, uh, down there in the field with a chainsaw and a wheelbarrow clean up brush. She's running the chainsaw. <laughs> and uh, she wasn't running right then, but she had been running. Uh, and uh, she's 85 years old, so if uh, if you think the Lord lays it on your heart, and you get with me and we'll go down there and spend yeah, about two hours and clean it up for my goodness. Uh, I said, <laughs> I started to take the chainsaw with me, but... I don't think she'd let me. But anyway, she's doing good. She miss, she misses everybody, and she loves us. And uh, uh, Let's pray for her and her family, okay? Amen. Father, we thank you, God, for your goodness to us today. Pray, God, that you bless through the a day and the week, God, through the camp meeting, God. We realize, God, that we need you every hour, Lord God, and we come to celebrate the uh, we call it Easter, it's fine, it's resurrection. I'm glad you rose from the dead on the third day. And God, that you rose from the grave because you couldn't be holding of it. Father, we thank you, God, that because you live, we live. We can live. We will live. Amen. Thank Amen. God. What a promise, what a blessing. <clears throat> God, because you're the first fruits of them that slept. Father, we thank you, God, for the precious blood was shed. Yeah. God allows us to rise, God, and to... Uh, Lord, to rise and God to be forgiven, God to be worthy, God, to stand before the presence of your Father, Lord, and God that you'll present us and say, Lord, this is my good and faithful servant, and uh, good only because of the grace of God and the righteousness that's in the blood of Christ, God, today. God, we thank you, God, for everyone that's here today, those that have come here, Lord, and, and God, we all should be in hell today, but God, you're a good God. A merciful God, and you're still, arms are open to whosoever will, God, can come, drink of the water of life freely. We just pray, God, that you'd <clears throat> open the hearts and the minds of the people, God, uh, this week, and wherever they might be around about the region, God, I pray that you'd bless and do what's needed. And Father, now, give each one safety on the road, safety on the journey. The devil would kill each one of us if he had the opportunity, if God would, uh, God would pull his hand of protection off of us. God, he don't want us telling, he don't want us telling the story. He don't want us proclaiming the gospel. He don't want us telling how good you've been to us and God, what you've done for us to save us out of a devil's hell. Father, now have your way in this service and we'll thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Pray for Miss Mavis. She, I asked her if she'd sing. She said she'd try. That's Amen. all you do. Yeah. I don't know if she wants the piano or the pulpit, but I'll get out of the way either way. <laughs> it's a joy to be here. I've been looking forward to coming down here and getting refreshed. <clears throat> I've been through a trial that was a surprise to me. I had a mild stroke, but God got me through it. I just thank him that it wasn't a major stroke. 
I do have some problems with it. And one of them is my voice, which maybe I'm being selfish, but it devastated me. And uh, the Lord is helping me get through it. I'm still singing for him because that's all I want to do is sing for my Lord and my Savior. <clears throat> Have you ever read through the songs that you sing, the old hymns? Have you ever really studied the words that were written? And I believe that these old hymns were written to give us peace of heart, peace of mind, a blessing, uh, anything that we need. I think God helped these writers write these songs so that we would have something to soothe us. <clears throat> the Lord put this on my heart. <clears throat> I don't know why. <clears throat> Do you pray for me? <clears throat> I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on And he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling And he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has. 
has ever known. She didn't need you. <laughs> You need her. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, I'm going to put this on just for a few minutes. And uh, I'll, I'm conscious of the time. And I'll be real quick. And then I'm going to hand it over to everybody else for the next week. Be ready to preach tonight. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, I've got something on my mind. I'm, I'm going to be real quick this morning. i got a little bit more reading than I do preaching probably. But uh, anyway, I want to read just a few verses over in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 and then Revelation chapter 11. And uh, I got this on my mind the other day. I've been thinking about this for some time anyway. And me and Stephanie were going, uh, I don't know where we was going, but we was in the vehicle, going somewhere. Uh, and she tends to listen to talk radio. And uh, Glenn Beck was on there, and he was talking, kind of caught me off guard what he was talking about. He was talking about the red heifer. And... Israel building the temple back and all of that stuff, okay? Now, whatever you think about that, I don't, I'm not getting into all that. I want to talk to you about what the Lord has done for us. Amen. That's what I want to talk to you about. There's a lot of Jewish stuff that's going to take place and a lot of things that's going to, but I don't want you to miss the Lord waiting on the temple. Amen. Waiting on what? what's going on over there, okay? And I, let me read this to you just real quickly down through here. The Bible said in Zechariah chapter 4, And the angel that talked with me came and waked me uh, as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and it had seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes and seven lamps, which are on top thereof. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that uh, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall, spring, he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel hath laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord who run to and fro uh, through the whole earth. Then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon thy right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches uh, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord, of the whole earth. Now let me go over here real quickly. In Revelation chapter 11, and I want to read to you just for a minute or two, uh, down through here. 
And the Bible said in verse 1, And there was given me a reed like unto, uh, unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship thereon. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred, uh, two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before uh, the God of the earth. Of, of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of the prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and smite the earth with all plagues, as often as he will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war uh, against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people, and kindreds, and tongues, and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and uh, shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them uh, that dwelt on the earth. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we ask you to help us this morning for a few minutes, for a little time here, whatever period it is that pleases you, Lord. God, to uh, preach the Word of God. We thank you for thy Word. Thank you for thy presence this morning, Lord. I thank you for everything that you've done, the hearts that you've touched, and Lord, just feed us thy Word this morning. We'll give you the glory and honor for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to talk to you about these things just a little bit, and I got to thinking about this. Um, as I said, uh, we were listening, and we were listening about uh, uh, the, go, uh, the, the red heifer, and, you know, they're supposed to kill this tenth red heifer, and, and then they burn the red heifer, and they take the ashes of the red heifer, and they, they pour it out around the Temple Mount and all that to sanctify that place, and, you know, so that they can build back the, the third temple. You know, all of that business is supposed to take uh, over there and all that. Uh, whatever you believe in that or whatever, it matters not to me this morning. I want to talk to you about this. Uh, here is a place in the book of Zechariah that uh, the first temple has been torn down and they're going to build back the second temple and the plummet is laid in the hands of Zerubbabel. He's laid the cornerstone. All this stuff is done. He said Zerubbabel started it. Zerubbabel will finish it. I mean, this, this is going to take place. But I got to thinking about, uh, I've been thinking about for the last few days, uh, the, the, the temple, the tabernacle. Now, in, you know, in the Old Testament or in, in the days of uh, the wilderness, Moses set up a tabernacle that was moved and they had moved that tabernacle. And, uh, and then a little bit later, as uh, we know that David laid up all the days of his life to build the house of the Lord, Solomon built that uh, tabernacle, uh, and he built it there in Jerusalem. And you'll know a little bit later that Nebuchadnezzar tore that one down. He destroyed that one. And uh, then once again, this is where we're at now, Ezra and Nehemiah get it on their hearts. They're going to build it back again. And it's laid in the hands of Zerubbabel. He's the one going to oversee the work here and all of this, but they're building the temple back again. Now I want to talk to you about this temple business for a few minutes and get to what I want to preach is what the Lord's done for us. Okay, I'm, I'm going to talk to the Gentiles for a few minutes and some Jews, I'll say that. Uh, but anyway, the Jews are looking for this temple to be built. Amen. But as far as the Gentiles, don't worry about the temple. Amen. No, you got something else. I'll get to it here in just a minute. I read this because he said this. He asked a question here and he, he said uh, uh, in, in verse 14, 
Then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord in the whole earth. And then over in the book of Revelations, he's talking about two over there. And I believe it's the same two myself. I believe it's a Gentile church and a Jewish church. And those are the two anointed ones. They had the testimony of God. They had power with God. The church still got power with God. And if, if Israel, the ones that are not blinded, I mean, if they have been able by the grace of God to see, they've got power also. They're all right. I ain't going to get into all that. But anyway, let me talk to you a little bit about the tabernacle. And I'll get to where I want to. If you was to go up to the tabernacle, whether it be in the wilderness or whether it be uh, uh, Solomon's or whether it be Ezra's and Nehemiah's, the first thing you come up to before you can go into any place in it, the first thing that you'll find out, you'll find out that there's a copper altar there. And that is to say copper is a type of judgment. That's to say that sin has to be dealt with. And I mean, you can't come before God. I mean, well, let me, let me just back up there real quickly. I mean, uh, you can't go in this place. There's never able to go into this place. Sin had to be dealt with. And in order for sin to be dealt with, almost all things are, uh, are, are purged with the blood. And, uh, and so they had to be a blood sacrifice a lamb, a bullock, or some kind, they had to be a death take place and they'd take the blood of that animal and they'd sprinkle it on the, the altar there and sin and forgiveness had to take place before you could go any, any further. And then you'll find out that there's a, a copper a basin there. And that is to say this, there's a place to be washed. Uh, before you can ever go into the holy place, you had to be forgiven. They had to be a death, and then you had to be washed. Thank God. I want to say this about the church. Oh, thank God I'm washed this morning. <laughs> Every whit. I'm glad above all things he hath made me clean. I'm glad I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Thank God. Amen. But let me go on because this ain't exactly where I want to preach. But before you could go beyond the uh, first veil or go into the, see, the first thing you'll find out, everything is judgment. It's copper at the top of judgment. But then once you go beyond that, you go into the first holy place, everything is gold. Amen. I'm glad everything, I'm, I mean, I'm well beyond judgment this morning. Thank God. Jesus already bore my judgment. If you're saved this morning, you're past the judgment of God. Thank God. He's already poured out his judgment on his son. I don't have to worry about the wrath of God no more. Thank God I'm beyond that. I, I went into a different bell of things. And now I come into a place and the first thing you see when you go in there is a golden candlestick. Thank God. I mean, it's the place when you go in there in the old tabernacle, the old uh, temple, all of that, there was no uh, ambient light ever when it's a pure light. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we've got a pure light. Yeah. And it, it talked about the pure oil, the golden oil. It talked about the, everything about the, the golden lamps. To all. It's a pure light. Yeah. But you go in there. And the first thing you see is this golden, I mean, this royal, I mean, Lord God, it's perfect. It's good. It's, yeah. it's ever. And then you'll find out, to, I'm just going to hurry because I know I'm, I'm well aware of the time. I ain't going to get to where I want to go if I don't hurry. But anyway, you'll find out that there's a golden table of, of, of a showbread. And I mean, that's, that just represents something. Uh, well, let me back up here. I want to talk about the light just for a second. I want to say something about that light. That light was never intended to go out. Hallelujah. It does not go out. Now, that'll mean something in a few minutes. But that was, that was the priest's job. They'd go in there uh, daily. They'd go in there and they'd keep, that, they'd keep that pure golden beaten oil in that. And that light was to never go out. Thank God. Now, that'll mean something in a few minutes. And then you'll find out that there's a golden table of uh, showbread, and that, uh, that's where God and man share a table of fellowship. That was actually put there uh, for God, but man was the one that enjoyed it. It was put there for him, but man was the partaker of it. That's where God and man begin to fellowship. 
Thank God. And then after that, there's a golden altar of incense. Now that's not an altar uh, as such to say it's it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, sacrifice, but this is just an altar of incense. This is for loyalty and friendship. Now I'll say something about that. There's, uh, there's never uh, incense that's placed on this altar that does not have salt in it. It's always salted. Now I'll get to that in a few minutes. It's always salted. It's all, it has to have that in it. That's, I talked a minute ago about the bread. That's fellowship. But this salt is loyalty and friendship. And ain't you glad that you got somebody that's loyal to you? Yeah. And he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Hallelujah. And then uh, after that, there's another veil. And then beyond that, uh, as you go into that other veil, that other holy of holies, you'll find out that there's an Ark of the Testament. It contains the tables of the law. I mean, that's God's standard of righteousness. I mean, you know, you have to be perfect to go. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Well, you say, I ain't perfect. Yeah, but he made me that way. Yeah. I'll get to all this in a minute. You'll find out in that ark there's a pot of manna. That's God's provisions. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To sustain you. <laughs> and you'll find out about Aaron's rod that budded. That's a continual mediator and intercessor. I'm glad I've got one sitting at the right hand of the Father ever to make intercession for me. There's things that's in that that meant something to the children of Israel. I mean, all of it spoke of things when they come through the wilderness. I mean, uh, God, done, He sustained them. They didn't plant gardens. They didn't do all that stuff. Every morning they got up, God sustained them there. There's manna out there. It talked about Aaron's bud that, or Aaron's rod that budded. That's talking about life when it's been cut off from the root, but God's still able to make it to bloom and, and produce, and, and that's the way we are. Thank God. But anyway, let me hurry on. I, Lord God, I'm going to get... Um, but what I want to say is this. I read this verse over here, and I thought about Brother Steve. You know, Steve's got a different way about him. <laughs> but, you know, and I read this verse, and it said this. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. This is when they kill them in, in Revelation chapter 11. And it said, and make merry, and shall uh, send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell upon the earth. Steve said that's his purpose for being here was to torment such and such and such, you know. <laughs> but here's a crowd, now listen to me. Here's a crowd that tormented them while they're here. And I believe there's a whole lot to that. I believe that uh, the church torments this worldly crowd. Now I'm not talking about, I'm just saying, I'm just talking about, see, the representation of that tabernacle in the wilderness tormented the crowd. You remember over in, I believe it's Joshua chapter 2, about verse 9, when Joshua sent them two spies uh, in, in, uh, into Canaan land. And uh, uh, the first thing that Rahab said, said, we've heard about your God that parted the Red Sea. We heard about, now didn't talk about children of Israel, said, we, but we've heard about your God. And we know, in verse 10 said, we know that he has given you this land. That torments them. They torments our government and all this crowd out here. They are not in charge. That torments them to think that there's somebody higher than them. They built that tabernacle, or Solomon built the one in Jerusalem, and that tormented Nebuchadnezzar. It tormented all that crowd. They served their other gods, but when it come right down to it, Nebuchadnezzar had to say, you've got the spirit of the living God in you. We're serving false gods. Your God is real, and that tormented that crowd. They, tore it, they tried to get rid of it. I mean, and then you'll find out that they built this, they, Ezra and Nehemiah built this in back that I read about where he's talking about these two witnesses and it tormented them again. Yeah. They was threatened. You say, why did that? Because they was threatened by a little baby that was born that they said he's going to be king of the Jews and he's going to come. And they said, no, we can't let that happen. 
And so every time that they get tormented, the only thing they know to do is tear down the work of God. Well, now I'm going to talk to you about this business. They keep talking about building the temple back. Well, Jesus said, well, actually Paul said, uh, no, Jesus said, uh, let me read this to you. I'm going to get way ahead of myself. Uh, let me find my verse. Uh, they, in the Old Testament, Jesus hadn't come yet. But now we have a New Testament temple. You say, well, the temple ain't there. Well, Jesus said, they accused him of saying, and he did say this, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. He also said in another place, we have heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands and within three, three days, I will build another made without hands. Amen. 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 Now they're looking for Israel to go over and build one back. But don't miss what he's already done. It said in John chapter 2, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now you say, what are you talking about? All right, let me read. First Corinthians, now here he's dealing particularly with the Gentiles. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Right. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? They're looking for all this stuff to take place. But he's done said, you are the temple of God. Amen. Yeah. Now the Jews are looking for something to take place. Over. But you, the church, you are the temple of yeah. God. Amen. Yeah. He said it again in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them Amen. and walk with them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. Ain't that pretty good? Amen. You are the temple of God. Amen. Don't worry about what they're doing over there. Worry about what he's doing right in here. Amen. You know what that means? He wants to move in you. Lord God, don't you think it's strange that he said something like this? Over there in that old, in the Old Testament tabernacle, there was a light that never went out. But in Matthew chapter 5, he said something strange right there. He said, ye are the light of the world. So what are you talking about? I'm talking about you're the tabernacle. And he put a light in you that is never to go out. You know why the devil is trying to destroy the church, trying to take the word of God out of the schools and out of homes and trying to get rid of prayer and, and all these things he's just raising. I mean, he knoweth he has but a short time. But, you know, I read it over here in Revelation chapter 11 where, I mean, that crowd tormented them. You know what torments them now? That light that's in you, Amen. that torments them. Amen. Least the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. Amen. The Bible said men hate, dar or hate uh, darkness. They hate it. They hate that darkness. I mean, they hate the light. I'm sorry, I'll get it right here in a minute. They hate the light. They, they love darkness. They hate the light. They hate that. They hate that that's in you. It convicts them. It torments them. Amen. They know you're right. They know they're wrong. They understand that. Amen. Do you think it's strange that he also said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth? These things that was in the, the, the temple back yonder, now he has put in you. You are the salt of the earth. You are. Hey, let me say this. Back there in that old, it, it, when they, they took the ark and they put the covenant, the, the New Testament law or the Old Testament law in it. You pray for me this morning. The devil's trying to trip me up. But they, you know, 
God took Moses up on that mountain, took two stones up there, and with the finger of God, he wrote those commandments. He wrote that law. God, Moses brought it back down there. It ended up over here. But what I'm talking about now is ye are the temple. You know what it said over here? It said, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. He's already written it. it it's, in, it's in your heart. Well, that messes them up, don't it? I mean, he, here's what I'm trying to say. They're trying to do all this, but he's done moved in here. And when he moved in here, thank God he wrote on your heart. You don't have to have man to teach you everything when the Holy Ghost is already dwelling in there. I mean, he'll go, ahead, he'll go ahead and say some things to you. Amen. Let me read another scripture to you. It said in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, and I really like this. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be a, the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tables of stone, Amen. but in fleshly tables of the heart. He said, I, I went ahead and all that stuff that's back there that tormented that crowd, that showed them who God is, that, that showed them that all belonged to him, now he is putting it in you as the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're the tabernacle. You're that. And I thought about this stuff. I've been thinking about this, talking about, okay, they're going to take the red heifer. You know, it's got to be... All these qualifications. And they're going to kill it. Then somehow they've got to get rid of the dome of the rock that's sitting over there. That is the abomination of desolation sitting where it ought not. That's that Muslim mosque sitting on the temple mount. It should not, should not be there. That's that thing sitting there. Somehow they've got to get rid of that and so they can sanctify the place and build the new temple back. And everybody's watching that. But they ain't try, nobody's trying to find out that God's trying to move in you now. I mean, when you, when you receive him, you are the temple of God. Don't worry so much about what's going to happen over there. Worry about when he comes by you, his objective is to move in you. His object, see, he walked, with, he walked with the children of Israel back there. You know what he wants to do? He wants to move in and walk with you. He provided for the children of Israel. They never walked in darkness. You know what he'd like to do is put that light in you, and you never to walk in darkness. I mean, a little bit later, he says something like this. You're not the children of light that this day should overtake you. But you're, you're not the children of night that this day should overtake you. But the children of light. Ain't that good? I mean, he's put all those things that was back yonder in you if you're saved. You are the temple. And let me go on and say something about that. Well, God, at any time you can fellowship with him. Anytime. Always before somebody had to go in there for you. But now, <laughs> being made nigh by the blood of Jesus, right, amen. it's open. You once were a stranger, had no hope, no covenant, Alienated from the con you didn't have you didn't have anything, but now, Lord, you're you're right in there. You don't need any of them Old Testament high priests to go in for you. You've got a New Testament high priest. Thank God, you've got an intercessor. Because this light never goes out. That's a type of life. This light, his light never goes out. It never extinguishes. It never, it never, you know, he died for you once. Now he's got up. Let me say, and I don't know exactly how to preach this or make this even presentable. But what I want to say is this. He said that up there where he said that um, it said he'd build it back again in three days. That's pretty good, ain't it? 
took them 40 and 6 years for uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, all of them to build that. 46 years to build that temple. He said, I'm going to raise it up in three days. The Bible said to be buried with him, be risen with him. He fixed it up in three days. Death, burial, and resurrection. In three days, he fixed it to where he could move in you. Amen. Where he could dwell with man. That was the whole purpose. When they come through the wilderness, he did not let them come through the wilderness alone. That's the whole purpose. You're down here in the wilderness, but you were not made to be alone. You was made to walk with God. He is made to move in and come go with you. Oh, this is harder to preach than I thought it was going to be. But I mean, up here kindly fighting the devil over it. But what I'm saying is this. Lord, don't miss. Don't worry about them breaking ground over there. Break up the fall of ground over here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, don't worry about what they're... If you're sitting here lost this morning, Amen. you listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. He's wanting to move in you. Right. not He's wanting to build something in you. He's wanting to... Lord, God, complete the work. Yeah. Over there, they ain't even got started. I don't know that they will. <laughs> I know what everybody says about it. But I know this right now. You are the tabernacle. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said something like this. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. See, you're a vessel. And the treasure is him. And he moves in and put lights in. He put that light in there. He'll put that bread that you can eat off of daily. Ain't that good? <laughs> so you say, well, it don't make sense. You'll never hunger again. It, it makes complete sense. I remember when I was looking, you know, at the top of hunger. I was looking for something. And I couldn't be satisfied. I jumped from this to that and different things. But when I met him, I was satisfied. Don, I've never went anywhere else looking for anything. As, as far as spiritually speaking, I've never had to go anywhere else. I've never had to seek after another God or anybody else that fulfilled my longing that was in my heart. All that come to an end one day when I met him. I don't run around everywhere looking for everything. <laughs> I found him. I've done found everything. But see, you are the temple. Amen. Break up the follow ground that's in you. Let him move in. He'll put that, he'll put that law in there. That's some, and I guess what I'm wanting to say is this. You say, well, we keep the law. I'll tell you what, you'll keep something better than that. You'll keep the love. Yeah, man. It, it's a whole lot better than the law. You'll keep the love, the love of God. And I ain't even got to the mercy seat or anything. I, I've, I've done by, bypassed that, but sure don't want to bypass the mercy Because after that ark is the mercy seat. I sure am thankful for the mercy seat. Where he took his own blood and put it on there. And prepared a place so that an old Gentile dog could come. And obtain mercy. See, that's something that he puts in a Christian too. You know, you can write, you can write it down. He said, as it has said, love your enemy. Well, for man, that's hard. But for God, that was natural. It, you know, when they beat him, smote him, spit on him, it was a natural thing for him not to open his mouth. Amen. He did not have any harsh feelings on the inside to express outwardly. You know why that was? Because he was loving those naturally that done those things to him. He'll put some things in you. You might get mad and blowed up, but then he'll come by or he'll just, he'll just start dealing with you about it. And it makes a lot of sense a little bit later. And they just don't. It's almost like what he said. They just don't know. They just don't know you. Lord, help them. It ain't long your anger will turn into something. Lord, help them. Amen. Be merciful to them. I'm talking about, see, that's where it's found. 
It's found. And that torments them. I, I done left that, but it torments them. People are tormented by the light that's in the church. They're tormented by the love that's in the church. They're tormented by the worship that's in the church. The church is real. Thank God. Here and, and, and power is given in Revelation chapter 11. Power is given to destroy it again. I've been saying it a long time. I don't think exactly the church is going to be raptured out. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to die out, most of it. No, I don't want to blow you out. I think most of it's going to say, so you ain't got scripture. I got all kinds of scripture. As it was in the days of Noah, there wasn't but eight. Amen. He said, when I return, shall I find faith? Amen. I, I read this, preached this the other day. You get it, listen to it, and I'm done, I'm done. But I, I've seen that. The Bible said, by faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. In between them, I ain't sure anybody else had any faith. I, ain't, I didn't find it. Can you list me anybody else in Abraham's day that the Bible said had it? Can you list me anybody in Noah's day that had faith? Bible even said, and I'm, I don't want to get back on this, but the Bible said that Lamech, lived 595 years after he begot Noah and begot sons and daughters. In the, in the 500th year, Noah warned God and he started building that ark. In the 600th year, the flood comes. So that tells me he died five years before the flood. Now my question is, where's the other sons and daughters? They was destroyed by the flood. Noah's brothers and sisters was destroyed by the flood. They didn't have faith. They didn't have faith. But they had the same grandfather, Enoch, that preached to them, prophesied of the thing to come. That scares me. Lord, don't, don't miss what all I'm trying to... Don't miss what God's got for you now looking for something that's going to happen out there in the future. Yeah. You're waiting on the temple and the signs and all these things. Honey, when he comes around and speaks to you, you better get in yeah. nice and let him in and open the door. Yeah. You are the temple. Yeah. Let him in. He may do some things over there, but don't miss what he's trying to do now. Because this thing is going to wax worse and worse. Amen. One more thing and I'm done. We'll go back to Noah just a minute. Do you think Noah, he had three boys, Sam, Ham, and Japheth. Sam, Ham, and Japheth and their wives was on that ark. But it was Ham's son, Nimrod. Amen. A grandchild. Don't you think Ham set him down and said, look, boy, I seen God destroy this whole thing. Amen. I seen, I mean, I seen him. He wiped out, I know you can't see it because it ain't the way it is in your day, but he wiped out hundreds of thousands. You better stay with God. Amen. You know what Nimrod done? He went and built the tower back. That's right. Mezrim, his brother, Noah's other grandson, he headed off to Egypt. That's where the Egyptians come from. All of them departed. That's what I'm talking about. They ain't a lot of faith. Amen. So when he comes by, he knocks on your door. Amen. Yeah. He's wanting to move in you. Yeah. Now I know it's, I'm a little scatterbrained this morning. That's okay. What I'm trying to say is that's what he's done for us. He Amen. made us the temple of God. Amen. He put in us an everlasting life. He put that altar incense in there, those golden things.
that table of shoe bread, all that stuff. We can eat, we can fellowship. There's loyalty there, there's friendship, there's fellowship. Thank God there's a light in there. Amen. And therefore we go into that holy place. Ain't that good? He's he got things written on our hearts. You are the temple. Amen. You're it. If they build it back, they don't know where the ark is and the, the law is. They can't, they can't finish it. But you're a work that is complete in Him. He finished you. They can't finish that over there if they ever started it. But you're a finished work. You're complete in Him, who is head of Paris, the Prince of Paris. There's nothing. We sing that song, but it ain't true. He's still working on me. That ain't true. That ain't true. You're a finished work. Amen. As far as your salvation, it's done. If you ever got saved, it's done. Amen. It's done. You're you're as holy as righteous and as godly as you're ever going to be. Amen. Now you might turn over some new leaves and quit doing this and quit doing that, but as far as your salvation, it's done. Amen. Amen. You may still have habits that you're trying to get rid of, and you may finally ditch them, but as far as your salvation, it's done. Amen. Hallelujah. I bless his holy name. Amen. I'm going to let you stand and speak because I ain't going to quit. If I don't. But I do appreciate it. <coughs> I just like to say that uh, to the church, the Brookside here, uh, you need to pay attention to that message because that is exactly right. Everything he said there, it's, it's us. And I, I see the the illness in, in Christians. Everybody's sick, everybody's going to the hospital, everybody's got cancer, everybody's had strokes. I mean, I see that. And I can't help but feel that God is not, he's not punishing us or doing, I, I think that he just, it says draw an eye under God, and yeah. draw an eye under you. Yeah, and he, he, he wants us to, we are the best. Yeah. Yeah, and I know we torment. I mean, where I live, I know we torment for that lost and dying world. But I don't care because it, of the Lord Jesus yeah, Christ, you know. Amen. I mean, they, they can't get to Him, they can only get to us. But we need to realize that that the light shines within us. If we're going to win, people, that light's got to shine. We've got to have those oils that yeah, are never going out. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was a great message, Pastor. Great message. Yeah. <coughs> I want you to remember the service tonight. Come back and be with us. Don't forget camp meetings. Camp on my time. I'm looking forward to a good time in the Lord. And pray for those that are going to be traveling, coming this way. We have Tracy with us tonight. This yeah. And uh, everybody, you just come back. Or just hard to tell what the Lord might do. Amen. All right, brother, brother you, you pray for me. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we come this morning. We want to pause and say thank you, Lord, for coming by yes. this morning. Check it on your children. Our Father, look it in. I'm glad, our Father, that we realize this morning, Lord, that you didn't cut the eyes off your children. Lord, I'm glad that you yes. bought and paid for by the precious blood of the Lamb. Peter said that it was yes. precious. I'm glad this morning it's the precious blood that redeemed us. Our Father, Lord God, when our Father, I'm so glad we are thanking Lord that He comes skipping up all the hill that day. I mean, Lord God, He comes with all the heaven that day. And I'm glad, thank God, that He triumphed. He done it all, our Father. I'm glad that when He hung there, I'm glad that he took the sin of the whole world on him. He drunk it. And I'm glad this morning that we're free. And if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. I thank you, Lord, for all that you put inside of us. Most of all, I'm glad for that light. Hallelujah, God, it will never go out. I thank you, Lord, for the precious <coughs> Word of God. That you give us, Lord, that our Father, we could uh, draw from. 
And Lord, I thank you this morning for them that had faith and believed God that went before us. Our Father, I'm glad, thank God, that we got to draw from them. We don't take that lightly, Lord, this morning. Lord, we thank you for your children. We thank you for every heart and every soul, our Father. Lord, while you're coming by this week, Lord, I pray that our Father, that they'll hear that voice. I mean, it's tender voice. I'm glad, thank God, He'll come by and speak. Lord, thank You for Your service this morning, uh, for preaching the Word of God, our Father. We appreciate Him. I pray, our Father, this week, Lord God, that You'll just come by and do. Lord, I know You will. We'll thank You. Bless every heart that comes, Lord. Go with us and we'll bless you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.